Today I want to show you the difference between a French seam and a flat felled seam and I'm going to show you how to sew both. So a French seam and a flat felled seam are really easy to confuse until you sew one. The flat felled seam is going to sit flush to the garment. So this is the inside. You can see that the seam allowance is all on the right side of the garment and hemmed under there. It's nice and flat. This is really ideal for places that are high abrasion like on your inseam of your jeans or pants or things like that. And then you'll also see it on button up and button down shirts at the armhole and side seam. They're a really nice way to get a nice clean finish, but it also be really flat to the garment. So it's great on bulky seams and kind of creating a more of a comfort with those seams. As for French seams, you can make French seams any width. You can see them on uh, chiffon garments where you can see through the fabric. They'll use French seams very often, really small ones. Or if you just want a nice clean finish. I, I really love French seam. It's my favorite seam finish. I didn't used to and now I really love them because you don't need a serger. The seam allowance is really nice and tidy. The garment feels a lot better and it's a lot stronger. And if we're going to hand make our clothes, I feel like giving it the best finish is probably going to make the garment last a lot longer. They're more comfortable. So if you have sensory issues with thread or anything, this is another really good option. And um, you don't have to have a special machine for it. I use French seams on just about every seam possible. There is very rarely um, you can't use it. Maybe something that's super, super bulky would give you some trouble. It wouldn't be really worth it to do it on, that, on a bulky fabric. Um, or something where there's a strange seam juncture, you might run into an issue. When you go to sew your garment and they are calling for you to finish your seams and you have the seam allowance that you need for the French seam, you can do it. You don't have to do a straight stitch and overlock or zigzag. You can just do a French seam. And as long as you kind of understand the construction of your garment and you can kind of think ahead, you're going to get a really nice finish. And you can see a French seam, it sticks out into the garment just like this, right? You could always edge stitch it down if you want it flat, but it's not going to be as it's going to be a little bulkier than doing a flat felled seam if that's what you're going for. But I understand if you're just kind of on the fly wanting top stitch down, go for it. All right, so let me show you how to do these. All right, for a French seam, I like to use 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance, but you can use whatever you want. Just remember you need enough to be able to turn your seam twice. All right, so the first step is sewing it wrong sides together. And you're going to take a little less than half of your total seam allowance for this seam. So because I like five eighths, I'm going to use a quarter of an inch. All right. And so now when I look at the seam, I'm going to determine if I need to trim it at all. I don't want to really trim it small. I'm really just trimming it to make sure that the the seam allowance is even. You can tell this edge was kind of cut crooked. So I might even it up a little bit. And then I especially am looking for any stray threads because this is when you see the threads poke out the final seam. You don't want that to happen, right? So you want to make sure that you don't have any stray threads there, especially like on linens and rounds and things like that. They tend to be really thready. Okay. For the next step of the French seam, we're going to iron it. And so what I like to do is take it to the wrong side and I just press the heck out of this seam here, just like this, get it really flat. You can also press the seam allowance open, but if you do that, that's going to be enough. And now when we turn it right sides together, it's going to want to be right on that edge. And you really want to get it really crisp on that edge there. You see that like that. All right, so the last step on the French seam is we're going to now enclose that quarter of an inch that we sewed the first time. And so I'm going to sew it at three eighths of an inch. All right, and then now you can press your seam and you shouldn't be able to see any threads or raw edge poking out of that seam and you've got a nice French seam. All right, for a flat felled seam, I also like using five eighths of an inch seam allowance, but it's up to you. You got to have enough to be able to turn it twice, but it's really that you're going to be hemming the last step over the previous step. So you need enough seam allowance for that. And some patterns that build flat felled seam allowances into their patterns will pre-trim one seam 
one side of the seam. So you got to make sure you read the directions if they are saying that's going to be sewn with them. Just be careful. All right. So if um, I am putting the seam allowance on there, we're going to do the full five eighths. And again, we start wrong sides together. And I'm going to do the full seam allowance on this first pass. All right. And then I open it up and I'm going to trim one side. So what I usually like to do is pick up the side that's not going to be trimmed and I trim the lower one. So usually we're going to finish on the back. So if this is the back of the shirt and this is the front of the shirt, the seam's going to go, it's going to press this way and hem over it. And so you want to trim the side that's going to be under the final step. And so you just need to know which side that is. And so what I do is I put the side that's going to be trimmed down. And then that way I won't, um, be in danger of cutting that top layer. So I'm going to trim it down to a quarter of an inch. And that's why sometimes they will give you the seam allowances pre-trimmed and then you will sew them together like this. One side is shallower than the other, but it's a little confusing, so be careful. All right, so for the next step of the flat felled seam, we're going to press this and start from the back, just like on the French seam. Get this nice and flat. Don't skip this. All right, now flip it over. And the next thing you're going to do is you're going to hem this over the other side. Now, if you really want to, you can open it up like this and hem, line that raw edge up to the seam that you just sewed, just like this. Or you can do it all in one. I like to do it like this, where I put it away from me and I fold toward me and then I press it. Now try and get this, this seam really even. Sometimes if you don't trim the seam allowance inside there evenly, it will push out and kind of give you an uneven edge, uh, uneven fold there. And so just go in there and trim it because this is going to show on the right side. All right. So now for the final step of this flat felt seam, we're just going to edge stitch this fold down just like we're hemming it. And make sure, like I said, you want this pressed really nice and firm so that you don't have any slack under there. Just like that. And then the inside, nice and smooth. See that? Very smooth. Can barely even see the first seam there. I know it's a little bright. Nice and flat. That's why it's a flat felled seam. Whereas a French seam sticks out on the inside. All right. Good luck with your flat, flat felled seams and your French seams. If you want a tutorial on how to sew a set in sleeve using a French seam, I'll link that in the description. And I have sewn uh, quite a few things with flat felled seams. Most of the jeans I do the inseam that way and same with a lot of the men's shirts that I sew. So I'll try and link a few of those in the description too. And let me know down below what you're going to sew with your French seams or your flat felled seams or which one you like better. Thanks for watching.